Hello and welcome! Time to talk about the Team Draft Super League. I am super looking forward to this show. I'm Randy Bueller. I'm joined by Matt Sperling, one of our 24 awesome team members. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. I'm almost as excited as you are about this, um, <laughs> and I'm super excited to be participating. Only almost. I guess it's hard to get as excited about me about this sometimes. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So the plan, this is our preview episode called episode zero. If you like, we're going to talk about the format. We're going to talk about the schedule. We're going to look at all of the teams. And then at the end, time to reveal who plays who in the first round. So lots of stuff to talk about. Should be fun. And uh, let's talk about it. So yeah. team draft, Super League, team draft. Basically, the way the format is going to work, this is three versus three booster draft. This has been the side draft format of choice for pro tour players all the way back into the you know to the mid 90s 20 plus years 3v3 booster draft has just worked out to be the right format so it's going to be six player draft pods and i think we've got uh, got an info sheet we can show you guys for this team members are going to alternate seats and yes i know this isn't a baked into magic online format but we've been working with the folks at wizards they they have some ideas they we've worked out basically how we're going to make this work so that you're always sitting in between two people from the other team. Now, in terms of communication, the way we're going to run it is that the only time the teams actually get to talk to each other is during deck building. So no communication during the draft and no communication during gameplay. People are going to be too busy doing commentary anyway. Um, but during deck building, you get the usual, oh, what did you pass? What color do you think that guy's in? The format is best five out of nine. I mean, this is just, it works out kind of nice. Three players on each team means if you if everybody plays everybody that's nine matches so first to five yeah this is a match. this is a draft this is a format of how to do a team draft that's like you said it's older than magic online for example right it's it's certainly older than you know streaming so this is something that we're basically porting over the format that many of us grew up with love we think it, it's a great way to get six people together and kind of if you do it enough, you'll figure out who's better at, who's better at this draft format. Um, just the, the way it works, best of um, best of nine means it's sort it's sort of like a round robin if you get there. Um, but sometimes it ends early, and so there's always trash talking. If you can clean sweep somebody, that's great, <laughs> oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah, kind of five O's feel particularly good. Yeah, so it's a fun format. Yeah, and it's it's close to what happens to the top four of a limited Grand Prix nowadays, except the top four of a limited Grand Prix, it does the same 3v3 seeding in the booster draft with teams collaborating on deck building, but there's only one round at the Grand Prix level. Um, if you've got the time to do it, the right way to have two teams actually determine who's better is you play everybody, right? It doesn't matter yeah. how the pairings worked out. We're just, we'll play all nine matches if we need to to figure out who, who gets the, the five wins. And the part that, and yeah, and the thing that people love, the, that we love, is that that doesn't maybe jump off the page when you look at the structure. You mentioned that people are going to sit alternating, my team, my team, your team, my team, your team. That means when you're drafting, everything changes. I'm passing, I'm passing to someone, and cooperating with your neighbor is normally the name of the game to get the best draft deck you can and the best outcome. Now it's not cooperate. It's be uncooperative with your neighbor, but build a great deck. So that's the dynamic that doesn't exist elsewhere is make my opponent, make my neighbor's deck as poor as I can while trying to make my deck at least playable. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I was going to ask you to, to talk about that. If you go 2-1 in a team booster draft, but you pass the 3-0 deck, that's bad. If you go 1-2, but you passed an 0-3, good job, buddy. Take one for the team. Excellent. And yeah. so you get just a lot more counter drafting and defensive drafting. And sometimes that means you're just playing more colors to actually get enough playables in your deck. The decks turn into these, I mean, they're just, they're not going to look as good as individual booster drafts because again, you're fighting your neighbors instead of cooperating with them. But that's, that's where a lot of the fun is. Oh, absolutely. I think there's, and there's so many layers to that. There's like, well, do I want to, this is a really powerful rare. Maybe, it, you know, I can't play it, but 
Now, what do I think, based on what I've passed so far, what do I think the likelihood is that my teammate has this, oh, maybe I better take it. Or I'll pass it, and because it's a rare, like a wrath of God that can be played around, maybe I can pass it, I'll let my teammates know during deck building that I passed this card. The, like I said, these are things that just don't really exist yep. in a normal eight-person booster draft. And, and the pack that has two awesome red cards or whatever it is, which you hate getting an individual booster draft because you want to take one, but now you've passed the wrong signal, now it's great. You get to hook them. Right, you get to pass a pack where the best card is red, but you're red too, so you don't pass anything else the rest of the time. Just lots of layers of strategy. Format is awesome. And with Magic Online, I, we get to just watch. Right, We get to watch the draft. You get to see exactly what the guy's taken, what has been drafted so far, and then watching with cards in hand, I think, makes the limited gameplay work out particularly well too. So Absolutely. I, I'm on record saying that you know, having a, a laptop-based premier event type of tournament would be awesome. We've seen Wizards do it when it comes to the Magic Online Championship, for example. Yep. And yeah, the coverage, the, I mean, the stra strategic depth you can cover, just, you know, the surface area is so much broader when you have online. You've got the hand cam, the draft cam, yeah. and everything's moving quickly. Players aren't Spend it. You're not watching somebody shuffle because they sacked their fetch land, right? It's just a different. The coverage has a different look and feel. And I think for a format that has the depth of this format, you kind of need that. And so I think it's going to really propel this coverage into a really compelling space that has a lot of strategic depth. Yeah, it's actually interesting. The you mentioned the Magic Online Championships. The inspiration for this Super League came at the the staff dinner after the Magic Online mm -hmm. Championships. I'm there. Athena's there. Marshall Sutcliffe was there. Owen Turtonwald was there. And the hero of the story is a Watsi guy named Chris Kiritz. Because we're I'm talking about how you know the numbers for the Magic Online Championships, the numbers for the limited rounds were great. It actually did better than standard on day one. And you know, Chris Kiritz is like, I could give you guys a six player draft queue. Like, what? I got a <laughs> six-player draft queue? Now the wheels start spinning, and Marshall's like, really, people want to watch Limited on Magic Online? In. Owen was like, I would play. Absolutely, I would play. So, yeah, I think basics from there. Yeah, there's been a lot of excitement on the player side. There are some great teams. We're going to get to the teams later, oh, I yeah. know. Some great teams that made it. Some great teams that, that just did quite didn't make it. But, there, you know, it's think true. about how much there was so much excitement about, I want to get in on this thing because it is so fun. Yeah. And I think that the viewers are going to see something that's new, but also something that they that's not hard to replicate. You get two teams of three together, and you can do a team draft. And I think that, like I said, it's a format. We've been playing for 20 years, and I'd love to expose more people to it keep that culture alive of these, these this format for side drafts. So I'm excited about that element of it too, kind of passing along some of the history, some of the tradition. All right, let's talk about the actual structure for the league. So we're gonna have eight teams and the way we're gonna work it is, it's two rounds of Swiss. So everybody's gonna play a match and then the winners will play and the winners will play and the losers will play. If you go two and oh, if you win both those rounds of Swiss, you're through to the top four. If you go 0 and 2, you are eliminated. And I mean, you guys have been in enough draft pods. There's obviously going to be four one and ones. You know how this works. The one and ones will then play off for the other two spots in the top four. And then the top four, those semifinal matches will always be a 2 and 0 versus a 2 and 1 that they haven't played before. So yeah. I think the structure actually works out pretty well. And the thing that's not written here, but that actually sort of sets the whole season up, each matchup, each like team A versus team B, that's a show. That best five out of nine, starting with a draft, is is the week's entertainment. It's a great format. I think the first thing top of the top of the list for me in a format like this does there, is every match going to matter? And it's it's obvious here. You're looking at two o matters different than is better than one 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 one's much better than o two. Every match is going to matter, no matter what the two teams are coming in. So that's 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 a big win. You mentioned we're gonna, we're going to get. Because the format, it does, you know, it, we're talking about a potential best of nine. You're going to see, you're going to see the drama build week to week, but also match to match. Where are we going to see somebody get clean swept? And imagine Twitter's going to blow up if that happens. Are we going to see a really compelling match nine? I'm sure we will. So that yeah. it's, a, it's a great format. Well, let's talk about who's playing. Uh, I want to talk start with the gamers helping gamers team because, you know, I've been running Vintage Super League for a couple of years, and the guy everybody's like, can you get Finkel to play? Can, can we get Finkel to play? Finkel played vintage back in the day, right? And I mean, I, sure he did. He hasn't played much vintage, I think, in maybe decades. Yeah. But team draft, this is this is John's format, right? Here you see the gamers helping gamers team. John Finkel, Chris Pakula, Jamie Park, 
22 Pro Tour top eights between the three of these guys. Just crazy history. Jamie and John both have top eights in three different decades. And the name, I think most of you know this, but Gaming's Helping Gamers is actually a charity that these guys have helped put together that uh, helps Magic players of, be able to afford college. Yeah, they had, their, their alternate name was uh, Greedy New York Bankers, I think. <laughs> I was suggesting that their team logo could be the you know the Wall Street Bull trampling over that little girl statue, you know, just to nice. represent their the corporate greed. But no, we like to give them a hard time about that. I think also um, thinking about when I look at this team, I see two Hall of Fame level players. There was John Finkel in the first part of his career and John Finkel in the second part of his career. Oh, that's... So, <laughs> that, um, you know, just, again, that you, you love is... to see... We're going to see a lot of Hall of Famers on these rosters, and so this team is no exception there. Fair. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to watching these guys play. I mean, they, I, you talk about doing this for 20 plus years. I'm sure many of my earliest uh, team booster drafts were with some of these guys. Oh, you could, I mean, if, if John wants to stream eating a sandwich, I'm, I'm probably going to tune in. If, you, if, you, if you're saying I get to watch John, you know, do this really cool team limited format, then I'm for sure going to be tuning in. So yeah, I agree. You're watching not just one of the best active players. You're watching, you know, the best of all time. That's always going to be must see TV in my book. And you'll be in the commentary booth, too. Uh, everybody on all of these teams is going to take their turn at commentary. Uh, the way the show will work, you know, we'll watch somebody draft, and then we're going to start two games at a time. I mean, we, we can't really do nine rounds in, in one work night. So we'll be starting two matches at a time, and then whoever's not playing one of those two matches, that's the commentary team, right? Hmm. One guy for each team. So they'll always be uh, everybody taking their turn through the booth at some point. All right, so that's one team. Who do you want to talk about next? <sighs> Uh, let's talk about let's talk about the Channel Fireball team. It's a fine team for sure. Channel Fireball is fielding the only team in the field with all three players in the Hall of Fame. Somehow they still don't have as many top eights as John Finkel, but uh, it's more a testament to Finkel just being off the charts absurd than it is uh, anything wrong with those guys. No, this is I mean this is this is three household names. This is not only three household names. It's three players that I, look 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 at the wings here eric and, <laughs> and and ben starking think about limited the fact that we're going to be booster drafting you know not a team that you're looking seeing where am i going to get my where am i going to get my five match wins well i'm going to have to beat some of these guys multiple times really tough <laughs> so these superstar teams three hall of famers luis um known for his puns Efro for his bad beats and Ben S for his jean shorts um, and his his love for such fine dining as Subway. Anyways, I've known these guys a long time. They're all great and also a, re a really tough out as I think about having to play these guys. Yeah, the stats that these guys have are, are just absurd. I, I've rattled off some of them, the 16 PT top eights. They have nine Grand Prix wins between them, including four from Team Grand Prix. They have 51 Grand Prix top eights between them. Just crazy numbers. Eric has actually won a Team Grand Prix with each of his teammates here, but they have not won one all three together. Um, and, and Ifro, all by himself, he has nine top fours at team events. Yeah, that's there've pretty only absurd. There have only been 30-some ever. And there, I think there have been 19 since they came back uh, three, four years ago. Just, yeah, so you're looking at a long resume. And I think he's also the most recent team limited GP. He, yep. he, he and Ben Stark took the trophy home with Andrew Cunha. So yep. you're thinking about <laughs> both the distant, the, the length of the resume and the most recent. Um, if you're going to do a power rankings, you're going to have to put any team with Efro, Ben S, and Luis on it. It's, it's going to have to be near the top. So... Glad we got to near the to top or at there. the actual top, though. Like, well, we're, you know, we're, we got other teams on this list, and so yeah, let's, I don't let's, know. I'm going to put you on the spot. Like, obviously, you would put yourself in the first place in any power ranking, but if you can't vote for your team, you putting you putting those guys on top or, or the next team. Let's talk about Peach Garden Oath. Yeah, that was going to say. I mean, let's let's get that on the table because that's what we're talking about here. Peach Garden Oath is th three members of the Pantheon, half of the uh, Puzzle Quest team in in the, in the Pro Tour six-person team format and really this is three players that are amazing like uh, of the top players actively playing but they're also have so much we've played a bunch of tournaments together synergy that maybe Luis and Ben S and Efro have a lot of that they, you know like you said they've played in this trio that trio two out of three 
Yeah. But, but these guys play together every single day of the week. I'm talking That's seven days a week. They're looking over each other's shoulder and, and they're they're drafting. And so they, they know how each other – and knowing how your teammates think about a draft format does matter. I'm going to – you know, I see a card that I know that my teammate values really highly – in a certain archetype, I can make. Uh, I don't think that that he would have been passing that. So now I have a better idea of. Wh- okay, I'm, he's probably not that archetype because he loves that card or whatever. There's these little edges that show up when you know your teammates really well. Plus, you just have Owen Turtenwald and and William Jensen Reed Duke again. As is going to be a recurring theme, there's not an easy out on the team. There's not an easy match. There's nobody on. There's nobody when you get paired that you're going to go. Okay, well, great. Well, we can hope that you know that person's probably not going to go two o three o. You know, you can't say that about any of these players. So that's what's really tough about um, a matchup like this. Thirteen Grand Prix wins, by the way, is does lead the league. Uh, Sixty four Grand Prix top eights also leads the league, and I, one Team Pro Tour win is also tied for first in the league. Huey did win a Team Pro Tour back in the day when there were Team Pro Tours. I'll, I'll put you on the spot. Who's the other guy in the league with a Team Pro Tour win? There are there are precisely two. Huey won with uh, Matt Lindy and Brock Parker. Man, that's a that's you are putting me on the spot. <laughs> Is it? Um... All right, I'm not singing the Jeopardy song for you. Yeah, hold on. This is a, this is a tough one. So the other team wins. I can give you a hint. Is it? I don't know. Is it Yelger? It is Yelger. Yelger okay. Peter's mom with with Von Dutch. Wow. Alongside Camille Cornelison and uh, Jerome, uh, yeah. So I had to dig deep to find. I had to dig deep on that, but okay, yeah. That's um, back when the back when the team format was a pro tour format. It was known as you know one of the hardest pro tours. It's hard to get a win, especially because Kai and the Phoenix Foundation <laughs> gobbled up so many of them. So yeah, that's it, that's why there's not so many of those floating around, right? Absolutely true. Yeah, let's talk about uh, Yelker's team. So Goat Stew is the name of this team, which obviously there's a story behind it. Uh, the Goat Stew is actually the official dish of the island of Curacao. And all three of these guys lived on the island of Curacao for a while. Uh, they worked together there. They, I mean, they still work together due to the magic of the internet. Um, the other thing all three of these guys do is they just win team booster drafts. Like, Yelger with the Team Pro Tour win back in the day. Mike and Rich and Yelger have all won Team Grand Prix. In fact, Mike has – the team has five Team Grand Prix wins. Mike has three by himself, which leads leads not just the league, but, uh, you know, magic history. Nobody has won more than three Team Grand Prix. Yeah, this is this is a really impressive roster where now you're talking about – now you're talking about players that really – yeah, you could say they're limited specialists. I mean, I think – you know, Mike won an individual limited pro tour. He did. So, so, and Rich has long been known as, a, and Yelger as well, long been known as great drafters. But like you mentioned, all that specifically team drafting experience. Um, if you're talking about a side draft and the, these guys walk up to you. <laughs> yes. And, oh, yeah. You know, hey, we got a couple hours to kill. I'm looking at my watch and saying, oh, yeah, <laughs> I got to catch a flight. I don't care if my flight's tomorrow morning. I'm telling these guys, I, I, I got to catch a flight. That's that's what I'm looking at here. Just three pretty imposing players. Um, don't have you know I, I don't know have much else to to say to no, highlight no, right. it. Right, Yelger has definitely been you know holding court off in the the side area at Pro Tours for decades now. You know there was a point where Rich, I think Rich Owen may have been the best limited player in the world. I mean he doesn't have quite the Pro Tour top eights, but he's had so many near misses. I think he's got a straight actually. I think he's got like an eighth, a ninth, a tenth, an eleventh, and a twelfth, which is just how close to having just a gaudy pro tour resume, right? Just- I once, yeah, I once had I once had Yelger on, on my team during a team draft, and we were we had a bottle of rum, and we were passing the bottle of rum and drinking the entire draft. And as I saw the quality of my drafting and play decline, Yelger was somehow still a world class player. Yeah. Now I don't know I don't know what conditions he's his team is going to set up <laughs> for the stream, but he can he can weather the storm perhaps better than I could. Fair. I just, those stories are also legendary. All right, well, let's talk about your team. You mentioned the uh, the Phoenix Foundation as one of the probably the most successful team in the history of Magic. Kai Boudet's team won multiple team pro tours. So you guys are the Scottsdale Foundation. 
It's like you think you just pick a random city in Arizona, add foundation. Is that the secret to uh, to Team Limited? No. Our our team captain and team mom, Paul Rietzel, lives in Scottsdale. So since that's where he calls home, and, and like I said, he by, by team mom, I mean when it's time to go to a tournament, he's the one saying, hey, have you guys booked your flights yet? And he's, he books the hotel, and then we just he'll tell us what we owe him later. Every team needs everyone. Every team needs a team mom to kind of he brings orange slices at halftime, um, <laughs> you know, just keeps us all hydrated, that kind of stuff. He's also pretty good at magic. I mean, you know, he's, he's our Hall bad. of Famer. Yeah, one Hall of Famer. The checks in at about average for the league, right? Yeah, I think yeah, most of the teams have a Hall of Famer, if not more. Um, for us, we're we are relying on a little bit of that experience, having played together a lot. Um, we're relying on the fact that. You know, some of us take pride in our team drafting game, which is, like I said, developing the specific skill set of figuring out how to pass a card through somebody, to get it to your teammate, how yeah. to figure out what's going on next to you and make sure that you're not letting someone assemble a really powerful deck. Um, some, so some of the skills that you don't always get to flex in a normal Magic tournament we'll, we'll be trying to display in this one. And, of course, we'll just be having fun the whole time. That, that's, I think, our spe- that's what we're probably best at getting together and having fun. Yeah, and I, I, you mentioned the team history. You guys did win a team Grand Prix together, and I, David has won two other team Grand Prix. I mentioned Mike Ron with three team GP wins is leading the world. He's tied with David Williams. Yeah, David has a super – I mean, and we got a second place together as well. So um, – and Yelger, we've talked about when Dave couldn't make it to one of the tournaments, uh, Paul and I plugged Yelger in. We, we got a top four – so we have we we've definitely had some, some some success at the at the Grand Prix team Grand Prix level and and in some side drafts. But as I look at the other teams, I mean, you mentioned would I put myself first in the power rings? I don't think I could. Not not with this lineup. Not with these eight teams. I'm not scared of anybody, and I'm not going to be losing sleep thinking about the other teams. But at the same time, I couldn't I couldn't look myself in the mirror and say, yeah, we're number one here. So we got some. I got a little chip on my shoulder though. It'd be nice to take it down. You're building up the nobody believes in us narrative. I see what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Awesome. All right. Uh, I do want to talk about, you know, another team that might have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, the, the limited resources team. You know, everybody's been leading the league in something. These are the guys that are leading the league in Twitch followers. Yeah, exactly. This is um, a team that I affectionately named uh, more name than game, meaning, you know, sure. Ben Stark, Eric Froelich, Luis Scott Vargas, those are household names because if you follow tournaments, you know, that you see them off the top of the standings every time. These are household names because they're really compelling entertainers, both from a streaming perspective, podcasting, coverage, article writing. Now, I'm not that's not to say that these guys can't play magic. They absolutely can. Paul Chion, yeah. he beat he beat my team in the finals of Grand Prix San Jose, the deciding match. Everybody's gathered around, all six players staring at that one match. Um, he defeated Paul Rizzo to take home that trophy. That one's that's still you know stuck in our craw a little bit. Sounds so like it. someone that can certainly play. Um, although the the communication rules, he's not going to have Luis and Ifro over his shoulder. Anyways, not to sound like sour grapes, but that's an interesting <laughs> rule. Too now, late. if you if you feel like and now this team, you know, he he maybe he's the strongest player on this team, and so that means he won't be able to necessarily if he spots something that Marshall is not doing. In, in a way that he thinks is optimal, he doesn't get to raise his hand in this format like he would in a Team Grand Prix. So that'll be interesting. The other interesting thing is, like you mentioned, that we're going to have commentary from the people who aren't playing. I think that's having the, the skill sets you see here from that streaming experience, that broadcasting experience, is going to add a lot to the show that we're able to produce. So I'm glad that these guys are involved. And, you know, I mentioned that we have some of the top teams in the world. Obviously, that makes these guys somewhat of an underdog or a Cinderella type of story. But, you know, any given Sunday, I think these guys could, these guys could win a team draft. Yeah. I think they've, I think they're the crowd favorites. I mean, I think everybody's going to want to be pulling for these guys. They've also got nothing to lose, right? Marshall and Kenji are the only two people in the league who haven't competed on a pro tour, but I mean, they're both super close in terms of skill level, right? We've seen Kenji make, you know, he's lost qualification spots multiple times. He's made deep runs at Grand Prix. Marshall only gets to play a GP every once in a while, but has, has made some runs there as well. So, I mean, I think these guys will be able to hold their own and they're also draft specialists. Like, 
what is Kendrick doing all day? He's mostly drafting. Marshall is mostly spending his time drafting. So I'm, that's a good point. That's a good, that's a great point. Kenji's going to come into here. He's going to have an order of magnitude more drafts under his belt than me right. or David Williams, for example. So that, it, it does matter. And, and so he's able to pick up, um, you know, maybe what he lacks in pro tour experience. He'll be able to add something with, with the specific draft format experience. Yeah. All right. Two teams left. And they are the two teams that the folks on Patreon voted in. Um, I had a lot of people that wanted to play the Super League. I decided to just turn it up for, for a vote. It was whoever supporting the show on Patreon. And, you know, the votes were weighted a little bit by how much people were are supporting the show. Tons of good teams that did not make the cut. Like I thought it, there's a team with the last two world champions on it. Brian Brown doing and Seth Manfield. I thought that team would would get would win that vote. They did not. You know, Marcio Carvalho's team did not get the support. Number one ranked player in the world right now. Maybe, arguably the best limited player on the planet. Maybe. Uh, arguably. I mean, we don't necessarily need to get into that argument. But he's no, the I think results make, are insane. I think, the, yeah, I think the case, the case that he's the best player right now in limited, I think, is really strong. So, yeah. I, so, you, like you said, there's some great names that didn't quite make it in. So, who did make yeah, it? Yeah, I, I mean, hopefully they'll, this is successful. There'll be a season two, right? Yeah. Uh, so, the first team that got voted in is Dem Boys. Mike Sigrist, Alexander Hain, and Steve Rubin were quite the popular pick. I think these guys are going to be good times, right? Yeah, I think that we've got some, you know, some young guns. And even though these players have been playing for, it's not like these, this is the first year that these guys are on the approach by any stretch. It's just right. you look at the look at the rest of the list. You've got players like Yelgu who've been around forever. Um, I was jokingly, I told these guys that you know it's more like dem buys. If you play against one of the more experienced teams, um, Dem is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> the experienced teams traditionally, you're looking to chew up the younger, newer Pro Tour players who have had success but don't have a deep background in the format. But it, it, this is like Pro Tour winner, Player of the Year, Pro Tour winner, though, right? Exactly. There's that. Plus, there's you know Mike Sigrist. He was around, you know, and he and you know he has the same kind of timeline that I have in terms of history with it. So it's not sure, like sure. it's not like he is a newcomer. But just, when I, when I, you know, when I look at Steve Rubin with that goofy smile in that picture, I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, I'm just, there's dollar signs in my eyes in terms of the opportunity <laughs> to draft huh? against these guys. At the same time, like you said, you've got a, a recent resume, certainly way more impressive than mine, and, and can, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other team in terms of recent results. And when you're, lo when you're looking at the, at, the, at the pairings board at a pro tour, and you scroll down, you see Mike Sigrist, Alexander Hay. I mean, you're not you're not happy to see that name. You're you're thinking well, this is going to be a slog. Alexander Hay is not going to give up any. He's not going to be over there giving away matches. I can tell you that. I played against him a number of times. Mike Sigrist, same thing. Steve Rubin, same thing. Um, these these are, these are tough opponents. So I'm giving them a hard time with that dem buys. The reality is, it's, it's going to be anything but a buy. Um, but I, this is one of the teams that has something to prove. They're not a team that you don't even identify them necessarily as a oh this is this is a powerhouse of team limited like some of the other teams that are that are here yeah and i think you're right that there has historically been a difference between success on the pro tour and suggests success on the the side draft circuit you know you go back you go back to the you know the late 90s early 2000s no one was afraid of kai well kai wasn't usually there was the thing like if you were drafting on a sunday at the pro tour kai was usually busy and I mean, they actually be part of the reason why he didn't necessarily get the reps in on the uh, the team yeah. booster draft side of things. But there there are some different skill sets, right? It is a team game. The draft in particular has these subtle interactions where it isn't just about maximizing your own personal position necessarily. So there's just there's different muscles there that if you haven't necessarily exercised, they can change things. Yeah, I think that I think that's a great point. I think also I think Kai in his prime was. I don't want to say a brute force preparer, if you know what I mean, in terms of his preparation. Yeah. I think he was a hard work guy, not an intuition guy, right? John right, was, was much more of an intuitive. I master. think that's a, that's exactly exactly the point I'm trying to get to. That you said it better than I could have. And I think it's just that you look at like David Williams and I, just to use personal experience, is that I, I never go into a tournament with that with that I did all the work and I, I just I've, I've been I've had every draft archetype. I'm always trying to play catch up and use that intuition in dra in the team draft. That comes into play because all of a sudden you got someone trying to cut you off. You're in situations you're you're playing cards that you're playing three colors, four colors cards that you might not necessarily play because you didn't get a you didn't get no one's gonna pass you 23 perfect black white playables, right? That's not gonna be your experience in, in one of these drafts. Given that, 
you're going to have to rely on that intuition. I've never, I've never been in this experience before, a lot of new variables. And so the brute force preparation approach is just not most relevant. And so that's why I don't think Kai was at an advantage historically over a player like Yelger, who has the intuition, like he can just, he's going to figure it out before you do kind of intuition. Yeah, no, I was definitely, Mike Turian was another guy who had that intuitive force in my, my personal experience. I was much more on the hard work side. So I, I hear you. I think you're right. All right. One team left. Field wasn't hard enough. How about how about we add an, um, a team Madison team? <laughs> if you're looking for uh, for team draft opponents, and it's like the, the the toughest team in the room is usually like the three guys you don't know, but they're from Madison, Wisconsin. Sort of. Yeah. This is <laughs> this is for, so this team. So Madison is where the rubber meets the road in terms of hard work and preparation and draft. They do like a boot camp basically, where they get together and they draft all day and all night, and so they have that. But then this, these three particular players from Madison are the guys that are kind of emerged out of that time after time with, with the most, um, with the deepest understanding of the formats. So even though, you know, the way I would kind of give them a hard time about it is, look, the best player from Madison isn't even on this team, right? In Mike terms of, it's Mike Ron. Historically, yeah. It's Mike Ron. So you, you named yourself Team Madison. It's like, you know, oh, we're the Chicago Bulls. Oh, yeah, but Jordan, he's on the other team. But at the same time, what, what you do have here is players that play well together, are really good friends, and just every single limited format, they seem to know more about the format than anyone else in the world. When they get their heads together, I was I was lucky enough to team with them for multiple pro tours over at uh, Team Ultra Pro, and they would show up with a, a spreadsheet constructed, and I would just sit back, even though I'm preparing with them, I would sit back and go, oh my God, look at the preparation they put in, the conclusions they're drawing, they're connecting the dots and saying, well, here's here's a common card that like you really need to emphasize this for this archetype. And like I'm like, oh, well, based on my experience, I, I haven't even got to draft that archetype yet. And these guys are like on level you know, five when I'm on level zero because I haven't had a chance to do it yet. So the preparation advantage is there. The skill set is there. And they've won. These players have won Grand Prix in, in, in Team Limited. They top four all the time. And last time LSV did a rank, and I'm ranting here. Last time, I'm excited about this team. Last time LSV did a rankings article for in advance of a, of a Team Grand Prix that I saw, he did... He had this team, maybe it was like eighth or something like that, like sixth or eighth. Like I, I think this is the eighth best team, and maybe Corey Burkhart was there instead of Matt Severa, whatever it was. I looked at that and I said, wait a minute. Even though he had them in the top ten of everybody showing up at the tournament, I still thought that was crazy. And, if it, and I said, if it was stock, I'd be investing. <laughs> Yeah, no, these guys, they had a Team GP win together. Justin and Matt also won one with Ron. Um, you know, Matt actually won three different Grand Prix last year. Like, if Sam and Justin, I think, are the more famous names, the more widely regarded names. But Matt's got three Grand Prix wins and has, you know, really got his game up to that sort of, you know, Pro Tour regular, Pro Tour, you know, I think he's bordering in on Platinum now. Yeah, that's a great point. It's, it's great to highlight that he's had, a, he's had a lot of success in, in recent history. I think it represents him finding that niche find, uh, in terms of approach and preparation and saying, okay, right. yeah, the, the, the team, the people I work with in Madison, I now know how to get myself ready for a tournament, whether it's with short, you know, that's like what Grand Prix are about, right? It's getting yourself ready for a tournament that you can't necessarily dive into like a pro tour head first, but you, but you still find an approach that's repeatable. And when you're winning three Grand Prix in one year, then you know it's a repeatable approach and you know he's going to be ready for Amonkhet or, or whatever other set. Yeah, and I know Sam and Justin, and it's really the team of them is the way I hear it. I, I keep hearing whatever testing team those guys happen to be associated with is just always giving Sam and Justin just credit for breaking down the limited format, putting the spreadsheets together like like you talk about. Those guys just, they just keep getting props and their teams keep doing well at the Pro Tour in those limited rounds as well. So. Yeah, it's going to, the work, yeah, the work they do, I would describe it as work that's going to make the, it's going to make your below average players average or above average and it's going to it's going to really make your good limited players with that preparation it's going to make them world class and so that's why they've had the success they've had and that's why this is at the top of my list of teams i don't want to get paired against in this field because i know that i know that they're, they're just really strong players yeah all right well you talk about who you want to get paired against i think it's time we've looked at all eight of the players reminding you guys about the format it's basically two rounds of swiss Everybody's going to get paired, and then, you know, the one and those will play, the O-1s will play, and then it's it's time to start thinking about the top four. So our first round is essentially going to take four weeks. Our first four shows will be, okay, these guys, then these guys. Yep. Let's put the schedule up and see who will be playing when the show debuts on 
May 16th, and who will be playing on the weeks after that? Drum roll, please. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, I mean, we knew with these eight teams, I mean, you can't really, you you know, however, however you, this shakes out, you get some marquee matchups. But I think starting out with Peach Garden, Northern Madison, maybe probably the two teams with the most cohesiveness, the people, the folks that I think about, I associate them with each other and with playing as a team. So you're basically seeing some of the best players in the world on both sides, some of the best team drafters, and then like three good friends that would that would love nothing more than to be in the trenches fighting together. Perfect matchup to, to kick it off. Yeah, I agree. That does seem like a super juicy matchup to start with. And then uh, you said you didn't want to get paired against the Madison guys. How do you feel about getting paired against three Hall of Famers in week two? Yeah, well, yeah, there's no easy there's no easy matchup. This is one of the tougher ones. Um, it's funny, you know, there's friendships on the teams and there's also friendships across the teams. Dave Williams on our team and Eric Perlick on the on Channel Fireball, really, really good friends. And of course, you know, Paul and I are also good friends with, with everybody on our team. So I think a lot it's, that creates an atmosphere where you can have a lot of friendly banter. And so you can imagine the trash talk that's going to happen leading up. But it's then a good you week be, to be on Magic Twitter that week leading up. Yeah, you got to be a little bit careful. You don't want to go out too far on a limb because you could, you know, you could lose to these, you could lose to, the, to these players at any point. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to figure out how hard, how aggro do I want to go. At the same time, um, I'm hoping that the outcome ends up being Efro saying like, you know, did, never, never do that third land or you know, whatever. <laughs> as, <laughs> as I as I dream it up, that, that'll be the, Efro the outcome. Efro complaining about a bad beat. That's a string of Efro it. tweets. It will be a perfect a perfect ending to that May 23rd episode. And you see the late start there. Uh, all of the rounds are going to be live on uh, twitch.tv slash magic. We start at 5 p.m. Pacific time on most of those Tuesday nights, but uh, Rietzel's day job means we will be starting at 6 p.m. on any week where the Scottsdale Foundation is playing. Yeah, I appreciate that accommodation. Um, as we turn to May 30th, that's where you're going to see um, John Finkel's team um, like I said, like I said at the top, I'm, I'm excited to watch that team play. Um, Chris, Jamie, and John. It is it is the only team where all three guys played on the Pro Tour in the '90s, by the way. Yeah, and they've got somehow the baby having debuted in '97. Yeah, they've got that that finance background that makes them kind of easy. <laughs> it makes them kind of easy to root against. I mean, typically, you think of you know Martell being the Martell being the classic New York banker that's easy to root against, but. You know, people love to root for and against and, and, and against these guys. I think on the other you side of the match, they're going to be rooting against John Finkel's team. I that think maybe the one pairing where it could happen, right? Kenji I was going to say, yeah, not maybe not every week, but when you're playing against Kenji and you're playing against Marshall uh, and you're playing against Chion, I mean, these, those sure. are those are those are folks with loyal fan bases in a way that I think people are fans of Magic generally, and that means if you're a fan of Magic, you're probably a fan of John, but they don't have a maybe a specific following in the same way the other players do. So I'm excited to see. From a community perspective, how those folks rally around and support um, the Marshall, Kenji, and Paul team, um, and whether that can propel them into like so, you know maybe shocking the world. I won't say shocking the world in terms of this will be the craziest thing that ever happened, but yeah. you look at the you look at the rosters and you're like, oh well, John Finkel versus Marshall Sutcliffe. Like, who do I think is going to win? You, you you figure John Finkel, but you have to give them you have to give their team a great chance. Last matchup, Dem Boys versus Goat Stew. Uh, also, just all these matchups are great. Yeah, this is this is kind of uh, this is a perfect matchup in terms of old school versus new school. Oh, that's a nice framing. I like that. I think, yeah, that sounds great. I think like when you talk about Yelger and Mike and Rich, you know, I, I could jump into a time machine, go ten years back hop out and be really scared to play against them if i hopped out if i if someone asked me you know what do you think about steve rubin i said oh you mean ben rubin <laughs> no, no no steve rubin so yeah it's, it's maybe maybe some folks that have something to prove on the on the left side on the and on the right side you've got players that have nothing to prove but that i know that really want to win this event there yeah. when people when people talk about the best teams if you don't mention rich hohen i think he's bothered by that if you don't mention micron I think that kind of the fact that he has three wins, nobody else has that. That probably gets to him, and so I think these guys want to be more household names, and they have the resumes to back it up. But they need to actually show up here. If they go O two, then you know what's the resume going to do? It's a fair point. No, I, I think you're. I think you're just right. This is going to be fun. This oh, is yeah. going to be so much fun. 
We're kicking off two days after the Pro Tour. So Tuesday, May 16th, that works out to be two days after the Pro Tour in Nashville. It's going to be, you know, people get to see what the pros do with Amon Ket uh, in the individual booster draft. But then Tuesday night, that's when we really get to throw down. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. I think the, the, the Pro Tour with the bannings is going to have its own excitement, a new format. And then this really, you're going to only have to wait a couple days. You get an entire new look at a new format, new approach. So this, is, this will be a fun week of Magic coverage, starting with the Pro Tour and culminating with week one of the Team Draft Super League. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm just super excited to be participating in both events. So if, if I wasn't, I would I would be a viewer, but I, I'm lucky that I, I get to play the Pro Tour and see see how that goes. And then immediately, I'm, I'll, I will be a viewer on, on that first broadcast. I'm going to try to see if I can pick up anything about the strategies early. It's going to be tough, um, but because I might play against PGO, the Peach Garden Oath, in the next week or, or in the top four. So I better figure out if, what can I learn from watching that. But I'm excited. Yeah, by the way, the uh, draft commentary that first week is going to be uh, Ben Stark and Marshall Sutcliffe. Oh, great. Get pinch hitting in while, uh, while we watch those guys draft. So it's going to be awesome. Thanks for hanging out with me, Matt. This has been fun talking through all the teams. Yeah, I'm sure we'll do thanks more for having talking me. Later in the season. Thanks for watching, guys. Not much longer now. This is going to be fun. We will see you on the 16th.